Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about geometry's most elegant theorem, the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so what is the Pythagorean theorem in case you haven't heard? So the Pythagorean theorem states that the square of the measures of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the measures of the legs. All right, so if I have a right triangle and I call one leg A and one leg B and then the hypotenuse C, then I know that the sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. All right, so A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared in this case. That's what the Pythagorean theorem states. So let's talk about two ways to prove the Pythagorean theorem. And this is proof number one. And now we're going to draw upon what we've learned in the altitude on hypotenuse theorems in order to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So if you have not heard the altitude on hypotenuse lesson, um, or if you don't know what an altitude on hypotenuse is, then I suggest you go back and take a, a listen to the alt altitude on hypotenuse lesson before you continue with this particular lesson. All right, so we're given that triangle ACB is a right triangle with right angle ACB. So let's mark that here. ACB is a right triangle with right angle ACB. We want to prove that A squared, or AC, plus B squared, or CB, is equal to C squared, or AB. All right, so we start with a given angle ACB is a right angle. Then we're going to draw uh, CD, which is going to be perpendicular to AB. And that's going to be our altitude. So I draw CD, and we'll label this point D here. And our reason is, from a point outside a line, only one perpendicular line can be drawn. We say CD is an altitude. That's by definition of an altitude. Now I can say that A squared is equal to C minus X squared, or we could say this is Y, and that's really what C minus X is. So AB is C, X is DB, uh, but we're going to say C minus X times C. So A squared is equal to C minus X times C, and that's an altitude on a hypotenuse theorem. And then we're going to say A squared is equal to C squared minus XC, and we're just using the distributive property from 4 to 5. And then we're going to say that B squared or BC squared is equal to C <clears throat> times X, or X times C, so DB times AB. And again, this is from our altitude on hypotenuse theorem. And now by substitution, since XC is equal to uh, B squared, we're going to substitute uh, B squared in for XC, and we get A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. Then we're going to add b squared to both sides, and we get a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, which is our Pythagorean theorem. So that's the first proof for the Pythagorean theorem. Second proof um, is to draw a, what's well, going to end up being a square, but we'll just say it's a uh, rectangle for the time being. We're going to draw lengths a, b, or a plus b perpendicular to each other. I guess it has to be a square because ultimately it's going to end up with the side lengths the same. So I have uh, figure uh, A plus B as each of the side lengths. They're all perpendicular to each of the side lengths. So I have a square with side length A plus B. And then we're going to draw a line from the intersection of A plus B uh, to the adjacent side. And we're going to label that length C. So I have the intersection of A and B, these segments that create this one side. And from this intersection to the next intersection on the other side, uh, I'm going to draw a length C. Right. So we draw the hypotenuse from the intersection of A to B to each adjacent side. We're going to label this length as C. Now it just so happens that this length is going to be the same as all the other C lengths because by side angle side, side, right angle, side, I have side, right angle, side, side, right angle, side, side, right angle, side. I have four congruent right triangles So by, by side angle side. So their hypotenuse or this length here, C, by CP, CTC are all going to be congruent. So I know that C, all these C values or C lengths are going to be congruent. So the area of the square can be defined in two ways. One is I can say that it's going to be A plus B squared, which is um, A plus B, the side length squared, A plus B squared. Or I can say it's going to be C squared, so the area of this uh, square here plus the area, the sum of the areas of these triangles. 
right? And I know that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. So if I have four times one half the base times the height in this case, I end up with two AB. So if I have one half base, which is gonna be, let's say A times B, and I multiply that by four times, this one half A times B is the area of each of these uh, triangles that are marked by the highlighted red. I multiply that four times because I have four of them, I end up with two AB. So the area of the square can be A plus B squared, or it can also be C squared plus two AB. So now I have A plus B squared is equal to C squared plus two AB. And through uh, algebra, if I express uh, A plus B squared, and then subtract 2AB from both sides, I end up with A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So A plus B squared is the same as A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. And we said that was equal to C squared plus 2AB. I subtract 2AB from both sides, and I'm left with A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And that is uh, the second proof for the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, let's move on to some derivatives of the Pythagorean theorem. And the first is that if the square of the measures of one side of a triangle equals the sum of the squares of the measures of the other two sides, then the opposite angle, or the angle opposite the longest side is a right angle. So all it's saying is that if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared in this case, then angle b is going to be a right angle. All right, so the proof for this is I'm given that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now I want to prove that angle uh, b is a right angle. So what I'm going to do is, and this might seem almost too simple, so you have to think about this a little bit more carefully, I think. Draw, we're going to draw a figure DEF with side lengths a and b such that uh, DE is perpendicular to EF. Okay. Now by the Pythagorean theorem, we know then that uh, and we've already stated that DE is the same as length AB, and EF is the same as length BC. So I can label A and B lengths the same as A and B lengths here. I can say A1 and B1, the same as A2 and B2 in the second diagram. By the Pythagorean theorem, I know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, so DF uh, must also be C. If DF is C, then I have two congruent triangles, ABC, and DEF by side, 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 side A, side B, which we've defined, and side C, which we've derived from the Pythagorean theorem. And as a result, these two triangles are congruent. And if they're congruent, then I know that angle B is congruent to angle E. And if angle E is a right angle, then angle B must also be a right angle. All right, so I've just proven that angle B is a right angle given that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And I've done that using the Pythagorean theorem. Right, so this brings us to a couple of other inequalities uh, relative to the Pythagorean theorem. Well, we know that if a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then I have a right triangle. And if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, I know that I've reduced the size of my hypotenuse in this case. So I know that I have an acute triangle. And then if a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, so I've extended c in this case, I know that I have an obtuse triangle. So what I've done is I've taken this blue length uh, for the obtuse triangle, and I've uh, placed it over the relative size of the right triangle. You can see that it's longer than the hypotenuse. So now a, a and b stay the same, but c now has become longer. <clears throat> and as a result, um, I have an obtuse triangle. In this case, I have the red line here in an acute triangle. A and B again stay the same length, but in this case, C changes and it becomes shorter than uh, what we have in the right triangle. So now I have an acute triangle. All right, that's it for uh, geometry's most elegant theorem, Pythagorean theorem. Come back in a couple minutes and uh, take a look at some of the practice problems involving the Pythagorean theorem on odd math.